Hey folks, PP Dave here. The Springfield Armory Betrayal Saga continues. Recently, owner and CEO Dennis Reese released what could be considered an apology video. I'm Dennis Reese, CEO and owner of Springfield Armory. You may have heard about a bill being passed through the state of Illinois called the Gun Dealer Licensing Bill. Springfield Armory is adamantly against this bill and will fight to defeat it to the very end. Stay tuned to the end of my video to watch Springfield Armory's video in its entirety. First, a really quick recap in case you don't know. A few weeks ago, a gun dealer licensing bill came up for vote in the Illinois Senate and passed by one vote. The lobbying group for Springfield Armory, which is based in Geneseo, Illinois, dropped opposition to the bill on behalf of Springfield Armory and Rock River Arms in exchange for preferential treatment in the bill in the form of exemptions and carve-outs. Springfield Armory got hell for it, and now here we are. After watching the apology video, the first question that popped in my mind was, is he being sincere? Is he truly apologetic and regretful for what happened? Oh, absolutely he's regretful and sorry for what happened. Springfield's customers and the gun community in general gave them absolute hell. It was bad. The outcry didn't just come from Illinois, it came from everywhere. Their Facebook review section had to be taken down because it was getting absolutely hammered. He's also sorry and regretful for the timing. When this all went down, Springfield Armory was at the NRA annual meeting, showing off their new gun, the XDE, and unfortunately, it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of excitement behind this gun, which is a shame because I'm sure a lot of good, hardworking people worked really hard to get this thing out into the market, and things are already looking really bad for it. Watching the video, I honestly believe that he feels like he didn't just let down his customers, but also the local community in Geneseo, Illinois as well. Why do I believe this? Well, first of all, the mayor of the city that they're located in makes an appearance in the video. The mayor of a city appearing in a video such as this is a rather high profile thing to do. And you don't get the mayor of a city to appear in your apology video unless you really, really mean it. Not only did the mayor make an appearance in the video, but the local high school has Springfield Armory's company logo plastered center court and on the scoreboard. It's pretty obvious Springfield Armory is on really good terms with the local community. You don't get your company logo plastered center court at the local high school by being a social pariah. Rob Leatham does make an appearance in the video, however, I don't feel it adds a whole lot to the credibility of the message considering he's basically a paid employee. There is a part near the end where I believe a genuine feeling of regret does come out. I hope they will understand that this was completely unintentional. I own up to it. It'll never happen again. And I, I'm asking for their forgiveness and their trust. It's, it's that simple. As scripted as it may be, it does seem genuine. During the video, Dennis Reese offers his own explanation of what happened. About 15 years ago, my brother and I, along with Rock River Arms, formed a lobbying group in the state of Illinois to defeat anti-gun legislation. I delegated this responsibility to our executive director of the lobbying group, and uh, he unfortunately didn't understand the graveness of what this bill was. I am glad to see him own up to the fact that it was their own lobbying group, the IFMA, that dropped opposition to the gun dealer licensing bill. So now I can ask myself why this happened. There are two possibilities. Either the lobbyist really did screw up on his own without Springfield Armory or Rock River Arms knowing about it, or Springfield and Rock River purposefully negotiated the exemptions and the carve-outs in the bill. Let's assume for a moment the lobbyist really didn't know the ramifications of this bill. I'm having a really hard time believing in that. I'm not a politician, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not a CEO, and I'm not a lobbyist. I'm just a keyboard jockey at a telecom company with possibly a slightly higher than average intelligence level, and even I was able to see through the bill for what it really aims to do, and that is number one, get rid of gun stores, and number two, to a degree, ban the private transfer of firearms. It couldn't be more obvious. All you gotta do is sit down, read the bill, and then think one or two steps ahead. Which, by the way, is something no rank-and-file Kool-Aid-sipping gun control advocate would ever do. I simply can't believe that the lobbyists for firearm manufacturers thought it would be a good idea to drop opposition to a bill that would obviously regulate firearm dealers into extinction. Dealers and manufacturers. You can't have one without the other. The other explanation is that Springfield Armory and Rock River Arms purposefully negotiated the exemptions in the bill, and now they're just trying to clean up the mess that's exploded in their face. This second scenario is what I think really happened. Chicago lost its gun ban, lost its concealed carry ban, lost regulation of concealed carry, 
lost their permitting scheme, lost their gun range ban, and then they lost their gun range regulation case. With nothing but losses under its belt for years, Chicago and the anti-Second Amendment machine is desperate for a win, and this gun dealer licensing bill is their current pet project, and they are fighting tooth and nail for it. Maybe Springfield Armory and Rock River Arms got scared. Maybe they saw something that no one else did, and just maybe they thought the bill would actually pass. I think that that is what Springfield Armory and Rock River Arms ended up doing. Firearm manufacturers and the Second Amendment are closely connected. You sort of can't have one without the other. You typically need guns to exercise your Second Amendment rights, and you need the manufacturers to supply the guns. With the Second Amendment come ideas of freedom, liberty, and being able to determine your own destiny. These ideas go beyond just wanting to buy a nice pair of shoes. These are fundamental life principles. Some people base their entire way of life on these principles. What Springfield Armory and Rock River Arms did could rightfully be seen as a slap in the face or a stab in the back. Whether Springfield Armory and Rock River Arms dropped their opposition to the bill out of gross incompetence or on purpose, I personally am going to have a really hard time buying any of their guns in the future, which is a real shame because I really do like Springfield Armory's guns. I will give Springfield Armory a pass on one thing though. Recently it's been revealed that Springfield Armory and their lobbying group donated some money to some anti-Second Amendment politicians. I give them the pass because, unfortunately, politics is just one big money game, and in order to play the game, you gotta pay. If you have to pay your enemy X amount of money to get a seat at the negotiating table, then I really can't blame anyone for doing that. Guys, what do you think? Did Springfield Armory and Rock River Arms do this on purpose? Can you forgive them? I'm gonna go ahead, roll the full Springfield Armory apology video, Watch it, and then let me know what you think in the comments below. At the end, click on my little guy to subscribe, turn on notifications to be updated when new videos are posted. Click on my Patreon link to help support the channel. Come back, watch my other videos, and as always, thanks for watching. I'm Dennis Reese, CEO and owner of Springfield Armory. You may have heard about a bill being passed through the state of Illinois called the Gun Dealer Licensing Bill. Springfield Armory is adamantly against this bill and will fight to defeat it to the very end. Springfield Army started from very humble beginnings in 1974. My mother and father actually mortgaged the farm. I mean, they, they risked everything they had to allow us to purchase the Springfield Army name and to get into the business. My father started out in the surplus business. So when we were kids, my brothers, Dave and Tom, my younger brothers and I, would end up coming home from school and going out into the corn crib. And we would be working on degreasing BAR magazines and, and big boxes. And I remember once my brother Dave came down with a terrible rash because he was in diesel fuel up to his elbows. We really have had firearms and gunpowder in our lives, you know, since the beginning. The Reese family has always been involved in the battle for Second Amendment rights. A significant amount of effort gets spent by Denny Reese and his staff to fight and combat all this anti-gun legislation. We're fighting to keep jobs in Illinois right now, and when you talk about the gun manufacturers and the vendors that support them and the dealers, you're talking about thousands of jobs. About 15 years ago, my brother and I, along with Rock River Arms, formed a lobbying group in the state of Illinois to defeat anti-gun legislation. Over the 15 years that we've had this lobbying organization, we have defeated literally hundreds of bad bills. I have had to force myself to delegate over the years to be able to allow the business to grow. The unfortunate part is I delegated this responsibility to our executive director of the lobbying group, and uh, he unfortunately didn't understand the graveness of what this bill was. We had to terminate his employment and disband the organization. We're doing our best to prove to the folks that don't believe us that we are taking this very seriously. We're being accused, unfortunately, as if we violated the most sacred trust, and that really, really hits me in the heart like I can't tell you. Just the fact that Denny, you know, was awarded the golden jacket from the NRA last year um, shows the depth of support that they have for 
pro-gun and for fighting anti-gun legislation throughout the country. Being awarded this honor isn't something that happens easily and doesn't happen frequently because it requires not only a substantial, and I mean substantial, donation in dollars, you have to show that you have been a proponent of gun rights for an extended period of time. You don't get a gold jacket without being an avid supporter of the Second Amendment. And it's too important to let it go to somebody that doesn't deserve it. We feel a great pride in being part of this. Uh, Our community and and I I would never want to let them down I hope they will understand that this was completely unintentional I own up to it it'll never happen again and I am asking for their forgiveness and their trust it's, it's that simple Springfield Armory has always been dedicated to the fight for our Second Amendment Join Springfield Armory and help us defeat this bad bill. Go to nraila.org and take action. And I promise you, our mission has always been defeating anti-gun legislation.